Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It's this sentence which uh, defines the backbone, the DNA of the calling of the Jewish people to bring God's blessing to human mankind. Now there are many Christians today, they believe that the, the origin, the beginning of the church starts with the book of Matthew, when Jesus arrives on this planet and he brings the good news, the gospel to human mankind. But there is an interesting passage in the, uh, in the epistle to, of Paul to the Galatians, where he says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, he says, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, he preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. Now, isn't this amazing to consider and to think about that, that actually the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel that God would one day save the nations, already was proclaimed to Abraham. And he says it was preached to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. That means when 4,000 years ago, God called Abraham and you're in Chaldea, and he declared to him, he says, Abraham, in you and your descendants, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. He didn't just call the Jewish people, he did that with the church in mind. He did that with the believers which we find today all around the world in mind. He did that with you in mind. He actually wondered, and that's how I see it, and that's how my personal estimation of that is. They actually strategized probably in heaven and they thought, what can we do in order to bring a lost human mankind back to God? And God says, I have a brilliant idea. I'm going to call Abraham. I'm going to use the Jewish people. In them, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. They will give the word of God to human mankind, human mankind and they will give also something very important to human, human mankind, which we are going to talk today about. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. The Jewish people gave an incredible blessing to human mankind. They gave us the word of God. It would become a book which would transform entire nations. Millions of people could save through the book which was given to us through the Jewish people, the Bible. But not only that, the Jewish people also gave us something which the Bible calls the world that became flesh. The living world, the Messiah, he came from the Jewish people and he lived right here. What we see here behind us is the city of Nazareth today. And we are standing here on, the, on a ground where archaeologists discovered some artifacts which would date back more than 2000 years. That means that Jesus could have well walked on this very roads where we are walking right now. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Hebrew word for branch, which was used in, the, in that passage, goes back to the Hebrew expression Netzer. And the name Nazareth or Nazareth is linked directly to this word Netzer branch. That means Jesus was growing up in a city which already has a strong allusion, a strong indication that it has a significance regarding the messianic expectation of the Jewish people. What you see here is a replica of a synagogue which could have looked exactly like that at the time of Jesus. It was a synagogue like that here in Nazareth where Jesus spent much of his youth and his childhood when he was living here in the city of Nazareth. Let us go in and let us have a look how the synagogue looked like at the time of Jesus. Now, after 
after Bethlehem, the family of Jesus would go for a short episode of time to the country of Egypt, being refugees from the wrath of Herod. But then after a number of years, after an angel visited Joseph, they would return to the land of Israel and they would come here to the city of Nazareth, in the place where the parents of Jesus, Joseph and Mary, were growing up. And this became his hometown for many years from now on. When he was a small child here in a place like this, which depicts the synagogue here in the city of Nazareth, how it probably looked like 2,000 years ago when Jesus was a small child. This was the place where Jesus was learning to read and to write. The education of children usually took place in the synagogues at that time and also in the synagogues from a very young age. They say it was the age of five or six years old. They would, they would learn how to read and how to write. And the very first book which they would read and which they would study at the age of six years old would be the book of Leviticus. Now this is quite amazing because for many Christians around the world, the book of Leviticus still is considered as one of the most complicated and dry books in the Bible. However, these little children, they would start reading the book of Leviticus with all its sacrificial systems and sacrificial laws in it. They would study it from a very young age. And isn't it amazing to think about that, that Jesus, when he was a small kid, he started his education with the very book which speaks more about the sacrificial system than any other book. And he already, as a little child, was through that prepared for the reason why he came into this world, to die one day as the Lamb of God for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus was growing up in an entirely Jewish situation. His parents, they would take him on a regular basis to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Passover. And uh, so for, on an annual basis, he would travel here from Galilee, from Nazareth, almost 100 kilometers up to Jerusalem to celebrate this great Feast of Passover. In a way also preparing him for the great task and for the great calling upon his life one day to be killed there and to die in Jerusalem as the lamb which would carry away the sins of the world. So it was here in Nazareth where Jesus was living a Jewish lifestyle, a Jewish life like every other child which would be living here in this region at the time. He was eating kosher and Shabbat he would go with his parents to synagogue and even he would wear a Jewish dress. What that means is that he would have tzitzit, four fringes which would come out of his garment and every observant and every Jewish child would and, and person, even adult, would carry that on his garment. We read about that in Luke chapter 8, when this uh, woman, which is suffering of a blood flow, was approaching Jesus from behind. And uh, in many English translations, we read about that he would be touching the hem of his garment. And what it actually was were those tzitzit, which were hanging out from the garments of Jesus. And she would touch it in faith. And as she was touching that, the power of God would come upon her and she would be instantly healed. So Jesus was entirely Jewish. He was a man living here in the city of Nazareth, living a Jewish life, knowing the scriptures more than many other people here in this land, probably more than everybody who was living here in this land. But at the same time, he was also challenging sometimes the Pharisees and the scribes in the way how they were reading and understanding the, the, the Bible. So many people even today, they want to challenge this whole notion of Jesus being Jewish. In Germany, 70 years ago, the Lutheran Church, uh, during the time of the Holocaust, during the time of Adolf Hitler in Europe, they developed an entire institution. It was called the Institute of the de Judaizing of Scriptures. They wanted to take every Jewish element of the New Testament. And of course, Jesus wasn't a Jew anymore, but Jesus was a blunt Aryan German who came to redeem the world. Something very similar is taking place here today in the land among the Palestinian Christians. Some of them, they claim that Jesus wasn't Jewish, but he was a Palestinian. But the scriptures make it very clear that when Jesus was living here on the earth, he was born a Jew and he died as a Jew and he was living in a Jewish context. And this is what the Jewish people gave to the whole world, a Jewish Messiah, which would redeem the world from their sins. And we should never forget that. Now 
it was here in the city of Nazareth whose name so much was alluding to the messianic expectations of the Jewish people at the time where he was growing up who later on would become not only the Messiah and the Redeemer of Israel but also who would become the one who would be a light to all the nations. Both the parents of Jesus, Joseph and Mary, they had a strong Jewish ancestry. The lineage of Joseph, and we have to call him of course a kind as his stepfather, was dating back even until the time of, of Joseph. And he was coming from a royal family, so to speak. But his real mother, his physical mother Mary, her ancestor also went back all the way to King David. And of course she also was coming from a family of the tribe of Judah, where people would expect the Messiah to come one day. That's why the title which the Bible gives him on so many occasions is either that he is the son of man or the son of David to refer to his physical human lineage, but at the same time he would be also called the son of God, referring that he would be a direct son of God, that his father, his real father would be the one who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. It's quite important for us to understand that uh, both concepts of Messiah, that he would be on the one side, the Son of God, that means his ancestry would link him up to heaven directly, to the creator of the heavens and the earth, is predicted in the Old Testament. Prophets foretold that the Son of God, when he would come, that he would be the one who is from everlasting, like the following prophecies. I will set up your seed after you, who will be of your sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. But then also the prophets foretold that when Messiah would come, he also would have an earthly lineage. He would have a, an, a human family here on earth out of which he would come out from, meaning the Jewish people. And also here the prophets foretold that, that he would come from a human family, from the tribe of Judah, out of the lineage of David.